Now that I've got all that off my chest, let's talk about being happy. Danny DeNovo is with us. She is the happiness expert. Welcome. Hello. Good morning. Glad to have you with us. So I want to get the, the, the negative out of the way right off, and then we can talk about happiness. Okay. Suicides, are they going up again? Yeah. So the CDC is reporting that 2022, we had the highest suicide rate ever. Do, you, do they, they talk about what the cause is? I mean, you would think, I could understand that it was 2020, 2021, you know, when we were all locked up with COVID and we were, you know, hibernating and, and all alone. 2022, though, that seems kind of odd. Yeah, I think a lot of it is sort of the aftermath of all of that and uh, kind of redefining a lot of who we are or who we think we are and what we're supposed to be doing. I saw a survey that... Uh, 90% of Americans believe we have a mental health crisis going on right now. Yeah, I'd say, I wonder where the other 10 are. Maybe, they, they, maybe they're the mentally ill or the other 10 because, you know, you, any, you walk down any main street in America and you see a lot of homelessness. Right. And, you know, the vast majority, I think, are probably have some sort of mental health issues. Unfortunately, I, I think, because I'm old, it goes back to the Reagan administration when they started – defunding some of the mental health institutions. I know I used to have one maybe 20 miles from where we lived, 15 miles, you know, and they had seven or 8,000 people that were housed there and it's gone now. Yeah. Uh, you know, just no, no, uh, no funding for it. You gotta, you gotta wonder, are there specific groups that are, that are falling victim to suicide or is it just general population? No, there's groups. Um, Middle-aged men are very susceptible to suicide right now. We have to watch our sort of teens, uh, young adult population. The suicide rate there is going up incredibly. And now uh, a really sad demographic that we're starting to watch more are young mothers, which is kind of a really sad thing to hear. Young mothers? Yes. Wow. That seems like an interesting one because, you know, other than... You know, if you're talking about, uh, what do they call it, postpartum disease and things like that. But you, know, you think a, a young mother has so much joy. and Well, maybe I just speak for myself. I've got three sons and a grandson now. And, you know, you look, they just bring so much joy all the time. They, yeah, there's challenges. But, you know, that's kind of the bright spot of the day is when you get to see the kids. And so young mothers is is scary. It's very scary. And I think it does just go back to the point where you were saying that we just don't know how to take care of this very well. And you have these mothers who are expecting to experience this amazing joy and this amazing time of their life and just aren't feeling that way. And then they're compounding that guilt on top of these other feelings that they can't manage. It's just too much for them to take on. Yeah, wonder, you got to wonder, do, 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 do they see any anywhere of people going to get help or are they just you know, quit? Uh, no, I think women are much better at seeking out help than men are. Uh, unfortunately, that's still the case. But I think that our system is just not set up to manage it very well. I mean, our, our mental health system from the medical standpoint is just poorly organized, poorly managed, poorly taken care of. Insurance obviously plays a huge role in everything. But, uh, you know, my take is always this. There are a lot of mental health professionals out there who probably aren't qualified to do what they're doing. Because when you're a doctor or a therapist and you, um, in, in uh, you know, a more physical sense, right, you go to school and you learn kind of mechanically how things work. And if you're a doctor, you go to medical school, you get to go in and you get to see uh, how a heart operates and you get to touch one when you do your cadaver lab. When you're in mental health, and you have never experienced personally depression or anxiety or anything like that, it's a very difficult thing, I think, to treat when you really don't understand what's going on underneath it all. So the research and everything is wonderful, but if you've never experienced that, how do you treat it? Even you know your average doctor has felt pain in some regard and understands that, but to understand the mental side of it is, is a completely different level, in my opinion. That's an interesting concept, though, because as, as you're talking about that, I'm thinking, you know, and I, I think a lot of times when people chat like we, you and I are, you kind of then I, I go and I say, OK, let me let me 
contemplate this from my own life experiences. And so I had, uh, I mentioned before, I have, I have three sons. My, you know, I think maybe it's kind of normal. My first son, I went to the doctor with my wife every single appointment that she had. Right. Second one, I went to about half of them. The third one, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see you when you get here, kid. <laughs> but, you know, with what you're just saying, Danny, my, my wife's doctor was a, a man. So he helped her throughout the whole pregnancy, and he was a high-risk uh, uh, OBGYN. But I'm assuming back in those days, you know, they, they felt that men couldn't have babies. You know, that's kind of changed a little bit, I guess, now. But, um, you know, so he was able to do that even though he had never experienced it. So you wonder... You know, we got to find a way to seek help for some of these folks. Every, 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 every psychologist, psychiatrist I've ever heard of, they all need one. Yes. So. They all need help. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, you, so, you know, you got to just wonder because we got to figure a way. You got to solve the problems is, 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 I guess, is my main point here because you can't keep growing every year, having the highest suicide rate every year. And, and kids they need dads, but they need moms more. I th I think I'm just just throwing that in my personal opinion. That becomes scary. It is. It's very scary. I mean, you have to understand when I first started exhibiting my symptoms of depression and anxiety, it was it was fluffed off by my parents, by the medical community for a very long time. So it had a chance to sort of get out of control before I actually got help. And the first therapist that I went to, I went in, told her what was going on. She told me I was depressed. I didn't really even understand what that meant. Um, but then her, her response to me was, it's okay to be depressed. That's what she told me. It's okay. It's okay to be depressed. And yes, it's okay to have feelings of depression and to work through those feelings, but it is not okay to live a life just sitting around being depressed, just being diagnosed with depression and that being the end of it. And I think that's where a lot of the medical community still is when it comes to these things. What are your thoughts about, is there a solution to that or is it strictly um, a medication solution? Uh, I'm... I'm not a huge fan of medication. I was on medication for a huge amount of years. Now, I understand in some instances it is necessary and it does help people. But just, you know, looking at it saying you're depressed and throwing a pill at somebody is not helping anyone, especially if there's medical things that are underlying the condition that can be solved. And now you've just completely, you know, masked over that. Yeah, and that's kind of an interesting point in itself. We want to talk about that more when we come back is that concept that, you know, the medication might make you feel better, but again, did it solve anything or did it just, did it, was it a Band-Aid? Continue our conversation this morning. We're chatting with Danny DeNovo, happiness expert. So far, Danny, we haven't been talking about anything happy. We've been talking about depression and I know. suicide and, and, you know, moms that are feeling that there's no other way other than going through some of these depressions and anxiety and, young adults getting in there is it do you think it has anything to do and I'm, I'm i don't know if this is true i my personal opinion i think a lot of this stuff comes from social media you know there's a lot of people that are out there that are trying to be something they're not um it's easy to to um get lost and think that's reality because you're hiding behind uh, a phone or a computer screen or something like that do you think social media has anything to do with it I think it plays a role, but I, I don't think that we can use social media to blame the situation upon. Every generation's kind of had its thing that it's had to contend with and people have had to adjust to. And yes, social media creates a, a very unique environment where um, you can go on there and you can spend a lot of time being in competition with someone you don't even know and feeling very badly about how you don't seem to measure up in some way, shape, or form. But I really think that social media is more of a mirror. It sort of reflects back to you the things that you need to work on for yourself. And it's good to recognize those things, but not to sit there and to wallow in them. And uh, we, I think we've just really sort of created an environment where, again, we're telling people that it's okay to feel this way and to kind of enable the behavior to go on instead of finding ways to cope with how we're feeling and to be able to soothe ourselves. 
you know, one of the first things that you're taught as a young mother is how to sort of let your baby self-soothe itself so that it's not constantly reliant upon you or something that you're doing, some behavior in order to calm themselves down to go to sleep or whatever. But we never really learn how to do that. And so we're going around expecting all of these things outside of us to calm us down, to validate us, to soothe us, instead of from that coming from internally, which is the same place where your happiness has to come from. So how do you learn those things? Or where do you learn those things? Where do you learn to, the things that are going to help you? You know, if you, if you have a, a panic attack, do you have to let it run its course? Or do you, where do you learn to recognize it and mitigate it? Yeah, I think that's the really hard question because, again, there aren't people out there in in the typical mainstream medical community who are teaching how to do that. Uh, they're giving you the thing to soothe you that you have to keep going back to, sometimes in increasing amounts to get that same calmness, right? Um, I've had panic attacks in the past, and and they're no joke. I, you, I legitimately felt like I was going to die. I couldn't breathe. Um they had a pulse oximeter on my finger and, and I wasn't even getting oxygen into my body at that point in time. How do you recognize it when you've never had one? You probably don't. But after the fact, I think you need to kind of go back through what was happening. And what happens is we allow our nervous systems to accumulate all of the stress and, uh, you know, constantly be stimulated time after time after time. We ride these waves of adrenaline and dopamine, adrenaline and dopamine, and our bodies get addicted to that. But we physically aren't made mechanically to handle that constantly. So we have to learn these mechanisms to allow our nervous system to calm back down on its own. And again, it's not being taught at school and it's not being taught from your, you know, your primary care physician. Well, that's where the question comes in is, Whose responsibility is it? I mean, young mothers don't know it, so they're not teaching it to their kids. Maybe older mothers don't know to, to teach it to their kids or don't understand it themselves. You know, because you want to get to a point where I would think that you don't even get to the panic attack because somebody's taught it to you ahead of time and say, okay, if this, then that. You know, if you start feeling like you're, you're tightening up, Here's some methods to relax yourself or something along those lines. I would think I, I maybe maybe I'm missing something here. Yeah, I think that's it. I think we're not really in tune with ourselves enough to know that that our body is probably sending us those signals along the way. And then when you get to the point of something like a panic attack, it's just been so overloaded that it just it's got nowhere else to go. It just sort of unleashes everything all at the same time. And then you have zero control over it. Um yeah. Whose responsibility is it? Well, I think it's all of ours. I, I mean, I think we need to to learn to self-soothe in a sense uh, so that we can also... self-medicate, but I don't know about self-soothe. Right. Self-soothe <laughs> is a different thing, right? To self-soothe and to, in, a, in a healthy way and then to be able to recognize when we see symptoms developing in the people that we love and be able to help them see that and mitigate it before it becomes a problem. But that, that requires a great deal of, of really being self-conscious of yourself and being aware of what's going on around you. And again, when you're ingrained in social media and worried about all these other things that are stimulating all day long, instead of sort of reading the energy of yourself and the people around you, then you lose touch with the ability to do that. That's a key right there, I think. And that's, you know, I think a lot of people have gotten out of the personal world, right? You know, the the young people nowadays, they don't even want to talk on a telephone. No, they don't. Right? Just text. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to be in the same room as somebody because I could be on social media. And if I'm in the same room, you know, I can be on social media. I, I was with a, a young person over the weekend. And they couldn't even have a conversation with somebody. Maybe that was only like 15 years older, but couldn't have a conversation without checking their watch and their phone. Right. You know, every 30 or 45 seconds. Yeah. They can't keep eye contact. Um, they can't sit still. You're seeing, you know, these increase of these service animals being everywhere. And while I think those are great to an extent, I mean, if these young people can't function without having something again right by their side what favor are we doing them in the long term? What kind of solution? Is there any solution to this? I mean, 
you know, we keep getting more and more reliant on technology. Now we even go into artificial intelligence. So, you know, are we are we on a on a downward spiral? I think potentially we are unless we sort of wake up and see what's happening and how to deal with it. And that's, you know, the kind of things that I'm trying to do, the messages I'm trying to get out. So I have a, a new book coming out next month. And what I tried to do is put together a progressive meditation practice for people who don't understand meditation or who maybe think that it's too hard to take on. Because when you when you go to something like learning meditation, right, you think you've got to be in this dark, quiet room and you have to do it perfectly. And if you're not spiritual or religious in some way, there's nothing to it. But it can be as simple as just acknowledging your breath for a few seconds. That is enough to really reset your nervous system to the point where you can tune into yourself and allow yourself to self-soothe. And you can do that anywhere, anytime throughout the day. I want to talk more about your book when we come back. Continue our conversation this morning, chatting with Danny DeNovo. She is the happiness expert. So, Danny, tell us a little bit about the new book you've got coming out. Maybe, maybe you can even tell us about the old book. Well, the first book that I wrote was called Get in a Good Mood and Stay There. And it was about my journey of pulling myself out of being this person who was constantly anxious, constantly depressed. Nothing was working. <clears throat> and what I did, trial and error, things I did to pull myself out of it and to start living a happier life. Uh, and so this this next book is called Show Me My Miracles for Today. And I know that that kind of has a religious undertone for a lot of people. I'm I'm spiritual person. I'm not religious. I definitely believe in God, but I don't follow a religion. But I really have come to terms with the fact that there are amazing things that are happening in our lives every single day regardless if we want to acknowledge them or not. And when we take the time to acknowledge those things and to slow down our minds and our nervous systems, amazing things start to happen, both physically, mentally, and emotionally for us. So what I wanted to do is put together what I call a progressive meditation practice, which starts you out at some very easy things that you can do every single day when you're sitting in your car, right before you're about to eat, when you're, right before you go to bed, and then showing you how to increase those in longevity and, and strength so that you can get to the point where you are able to take a very, a very anxious nervous system and calm it down so that you have control again and that you're feeling good most of the time. So it sounds to me like I'm going to have to ask a big favor of you, Danny. Okay. So if I, if I, sent, if I got a book like this from my wife, yes, I'm going to probably get shot. Not literally. I mean, you know, she's going to, what are you telling me? I'm anxious. I mean, I'll just listen to me and you won't be anxious anymore. But if you send it to her, you know, I might be able to, I might, it might uh, solve some problems. Right. And it wouldn't, I wouldn't even want to, to say to someone, give it to someone you think is anxious, right? It's, it's not about saying you're anxious or saying you're depressed or having to admit to anything. Who out there doesn't want to feel better every single day? Who doesn't want to feel alive? When you get out of bed and your feet hit the floor, who doesn't want to be like, yes, like I have this today. It's going to be a great day. Who doesn't want that feeling legitimately? Not trying to, you know, put on a mask again and say, yeah, it's going to be a great day. No, like legitimately feeling that way. And that's what this book is designed to do is to rewire the brain so that when you wake up, that's how the day starts. Okay. So I can tell my wife she needs to have her brain rewired. You could say I'm that. I'm not sure I'll or, get to you through your 37. I mean, we made 36. Or you I could say, say that I, I might love, not be able to get. Yeah, I love you so much, and you are an amazing person, and I want you to get everything that you can get out of every single day, and that's why I thought this book might be good. There we go. Okay. So when, when's the book coming out? It's coming out on September 12th on Amazon. September 12th on Amazon. Would have been my mom's birthday. Okay. Uh, and are you doing it... Uh, for those of us that can't read, are you doing it in Audible? Uh, I will be doing it in Audible, yes. And I just want to mention, too, that the first two weeks of all profits that I get from it, I'm donating to a group here in Pennsylvania. It's a nonprofit group called I Am Fine that is uh, dedicating their services to helping people who are in crisis from depression, uh, veterans, people with PTSD, young mothers, anyone who's just kind of going through this thing and doesn't really understand how it's taking over them. It's a way to help them express those feelings so that they can get to the heart of it. Is it available for pre-order yet or do you have to wait? You can pre-order today. Yes, you can. Okay. And it's called? 
It's called Show Me My Miracles for Today. Miracles for Today. Okay. Show Me My Miracles for Today. Love that idea. And it's uh, it's coming out on September 12th. Pre-order right now. Um, I'm going to send it anonymously to my wife, and that way I don't get in trouble. Okay. Right, good. <laughs> Gotta love it. I appreciate you coming on and sharing this with us, Danny. I appreciate you sharing your story and uh, and opening up to our audience so we can you know, try and find better ways to, to enjoy life uh, and enjoy society and watch others do the same. And again, Show Me My Miracles for Today is the name of the book. Danny DeNovo is the author. September 12th, 